Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be joined on Zoom, via Zoom, by British Bantamweight Champion Lee McGregor. Lee, before we start talking boxing, I've got to ask, how are you coping with uh, these difficult times? I'm just, just trying my best to get on with it, mate. Just try to stay as positive as I can, um, spend some quality time with the family and that. Maybe not get this opportunity again, so I'm just trying to make the best out uh, of a bad situation. Eh? But as, as the weeks go by, it is, it's, it's getting tough. I'm missing the gym, I'm missing... Missing the sparring, kind of missing, I'm missing all that kind of thing. So even just day to day life, getting being able to get up and go to the shop, see my gran and that, do you know what I mean? Mm. I can't, can't even do any of that. So I am starting to miss all that, like, but I'm just trying to stay positive. I think that's the best attitude to have at this moment in time is just try and stay positive, make the best of a bad situation, like a glass half full sort of thing. But I want to talk a little bit of boxing with you, mate, if you don't mind. Uh, you're saying Aye, that you're missing know. the sparring and stuff like that, and the training, the gym. How are you keeping fit? How are you sort of like, have you got a bag at the house? Have you got anything you can do to do some punching or are you just out running? I know, well, I've been, I've, to be fair, I've done some of my longest runs that I've ever done. Like, um, I've always sort of been a decent runner and that. I've always done your odds five, six mile every week, every every second day. Do you know what I mean? Like, constant or if I'm in camp, it'll be sprints. It's all varied really, but we're having this time you know, knowing that I've not got hard sparring this week or I've not got a hard session tomorrow kind of been, I've been smashing out some runs kind of done a half marathon and that the other day there. That. I'm, I'm, I'm just I, I'm doing a lot of running I'm enjoying it as well um, normally I'm, I've got a couple of layers on I'm always thinking about my weight or I'm always doing something I'm always trying to save myself for sparring the next day or something so I'm just actually enjoying just getting to get out on the roads and just, just soak it all up just get my earphones in and just forget about the world for however long I'm out on the roads for and then come back and ah, as you say I've got a bag but I've, I've not really got I've just hang it up in the garden and then take it back down again and it's no it's no ideal but it's just as I say we're just just doing what we can and doing a couple of sessions here and there some exercises kind of I'm keeping fit I am keeping fit but running's the main the only main thing that I'm doing I'm doing a couple of cycles and that as well I Keeping fit and keeping on top of my weight, and that's what I need to do. So I'll keep doing that. I think that's the best way to do because nobody knows when we're going to get the green light to start putting on shows and stuff like that. So you've got to stay ready. But in terms of yeah. you, were you destined to be out on the the Josh Taylor undercard? Were you? Is that sort of like? Aye. Well, what were you? Are you talking? Was I? Well, as you know, I was meant to be on that May the second one, um, which was a, a week away now, eh? So. Mm-hmm. Um, Ah, it's a nightmare. It's gotten, but um, I, I'm I imagine it's uh, it'll be rescheduled. Um, when we don't know yet, but um, I just need to, as you say, just we did we didn't really know what's going to happen, so I need to stay on the ball. I could get I could get a call and say, listen, something's happening behind closed doors in eight weeks or whatever, and I just need to be sh- sure that I've got that base fitness, which I always normally have anyway, and then it's just all about getting the sparring in and and just getting ready to fight. Um. But I, whether it's Josh's undercard and a big night at the Hydro, I just don't know, Andy, eh? because this news and that, you watch it and you just, it's just not looking very good, Ken. It's not looking very hopeful. Um, we, we live for nights like that. And mm-hmm. I, just, I, just, I just don't know what's, what's happening. It's, it really is a nightmare. Well, so, like, are you sort of like going to, was it going to be a defence of your British title? Were you going to get like a British fighter in there to... Are you? Because I, th- I haven't I've, asked you this already, but are you going to defend it three times? Is that sort of like the hope for you and win it outright, or do you want just keep the move on up that ladder to world level? Well, I it was this one was a defence of the British. Uh, we were just basically trying to finalise an opponent, and, and then obviously the, this happened, so we didn't even get a, an opponent confirmed. Um, but again, it was just we were just going to was going to play it by ear, see see what my team thought, see what see what everyone thought to be fair but our main focus was obviously on May the 2nd and defending the title and then taking it for there maybe another defence that maybe could have been the rematch with Cash if I maybe could have got a, a shot at the European title I'd, I'm no I would love to win it outright but I'm no like setting my, my my heart on it and saying listen that's what I'm doing because anything can happen in this sport as we know and I'm I'm no one to knock back opportunities so if a big opportunity comes my way, then then I'll I'll obviously 
I'll have to vacate the belts and, and go on and push on to bigger and better things. But I'm not giving that belt, the belts up as easy as just, uh, listen, you're going to need to move, like, I don't know, move up weight. A lot of folk are saying, are you going to move up weight? Like, that could be a possibility as well. But it's just whatever my team say, I need to take the right advice and, and, and take it for there. But I'm, I'm no no wanting to give these belts up as easy as just simply just, just handing them away. So um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get this, get back up and running ASAP. And I can get in and defend my belts. That's that's the most. That's what I want to do. So and then then we can take it for there. I mean, like you you love that British title. You you done it for like your dad. You you said that your dad told yeah. you that you were going to be British champion from a young age and stuff like that. Yeah. But like I said to you, like you're flying at the moment. You're eight and zero, six yeah. kilos. Is it eight and zero? I think it is, isn't it? Aye. Aye yeah. Eight and zero, yeah. six kilos. Aye. I mean, you did bantamweight division. Those lower divisions, there isn't many fighters around. So, how many fights are you away from making that big step, to that big jump up to like world level? Well, that's what I mean. Like we were, we were struggling a bit, like to to get an opponent. Um, we're being disrespectful, you know, a worthy opponent because there's all the opponents, myself or Cash, I've beaten basically most of them in Britain or or were above them anyway. And then obviously the the step up is is I feel like where we we're both at. Obviously the I did have an opportunity on May the second. It was it was set. It was in Glasgow Hydro. We thought well, as a defence of the British, we'll get Cash was fighting in April anyway. So we thought right, we'll we'll get a defence in and and then we'll take things after that. And then obviously that fell through. So I just I, I don't know. I just feel like myself and him are sort of. A, above that but at the same time we're still young but especially me I'm only eight fights do you know it's what do you do but the way I'm progressing and, and the mindset and the fighter I am I'm I'm, I'm not bothered about any and like I'm no I'm no scared to take risks I have I've been like that since my my amateur days I've, I've been in the deep end from the very get-go and I'm gonna that's my mindset until I probably finish my career do you know and people might say it's oh it's a bit Stupid and that, but do you know what? Like, I'm, I'm taking these risks, and every one of them have paid off so far. So, and I wouldn't have had the nights and the moments that I've had if I never took these risks. And a lot of fighters out there don't take their risks, and that's why they're no in a position that I'm in just now. So, it has, it does have its benefits. And obviously, ah, yeah, you might, you might lose, you might, you, but you'll never know until you take the risk. So. Uh, if an opportunity comes my way, for example, European title, then I'll I'll jump it in a heartbeat. Um, and then I, as you say, like European, it's just it's, it's so hard for us just now to be honest because I do genuinely believe I've got in me to win a European title in my next fight. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it's it's what do you do after that? You know, it is a big jump to world level. There's some of the biggest names in boxing are. Um, Holding, holding their belts just now, and I fought the European title in my next fight. Say I won, that's only nine fights in. You know, like it would be, it, it, it would be crazy to to even mention any of the guy, any of the world champions. So I feel like if I'd done that, I would need to stay around that level for three, four fights, and then back in. If if this never happened, this is really a a nightmare for me because my plan was of 2020 gather up as much experience get some good big fights in and then 2021 we can really crack on and try and challenge for a world title but that's obviously on hold and then we'll we'll just have to as I keep saying Andy we'll just have to play it by ear and see what happens but mindset is fully I want to be a world champion sooner rather than later but obviously with the right steps and the right advice very mature, mature answer there, Lee. But you mentioned Cash there. I spoke to Cash last week. He seems to be—he wants the rematch. You want the rematch, but he wants yeah. the rematch for something bigger. He wants a big night at the Hydro. He wants the big payday. He wants maybe a European, maybe even a world title on the line. Do you share yeah. that sort of opinion? Hundred percent. Aye, of course. I think we both proved that in the first fight we had. Got to make um, each other some money. <laughs> aye, of course. At the end of the day, like I, I've said this before, but we're one fight away from possibly never boxing again do you know what I mean and and that's that's a brutal sport that we're in and um, we need to try and make as much money as we can and um, 
and look after our families. And again, I've, I've said it before, I, I didn't want to be one of these fighters who's still fighting 30, 35, 36 year old, starting to get miles on the clock. Not really. I want to see my kid grow up. I wanted to have to take her on holidays. I want to remember her whole life. You know, I didn't want to go down a route where, where I'm just end up punch drunk and just I can't enjoy the can my daughter's later years and that. So I I just want to get in and get out as safely and as quickly as I can. Um, and that's and be as successful as I can. And obviously that's become a world champion. And and who knows I've got the frame and the ball to go up through the weights as well so um, the future is exciting I just need to stay grounded keep working hard and, and I'm, I'm sure opportunities will come I'm a, I, I kind of like you know I'm a, I'm a selfish Scotsman I'm a selfish jock I admit that yeah. but I, I sort of like think how, how good would it be if you had a world title and Cash had a world title two oh. Scottish guys having a world title fighting to unify man, that, well, look at time the, castle, you imagine that I know well look at the hype that we had and you could say we were two young unbeaten fighters, Ken, like, like, and, and there was still huge hype about the fight. Everyone was still so excited for it. And and some say it's one of the best fights they've seen in that. So imagine a year or two down the line, both of us more experienced, better fighters, world titles. It's, cra- it's a crazy thought um, and really exciting, but we just die. We just need to see as a, as I keep saying as well, like I am big. I, I don't know what can happen. Like it's no secret. It's tough for me to make the weight. Um, a year down the line, I, I don't know if I'm, if I'll, I'll, I'll be how I am now, or I'll, I might stretch and have to go super bantam. But that's that's why we just need to see what happens. I'm obviously made it clear. I'm I'm well up for the rematch. Um, so is he. So once everything gets back back to normal. We can try and push for it, but obviously, as you say, you want to have someone, someone big on the line. Ideally, I would love to try and win the European title soon as, and I would. I've, the day after our first fight, I, I stated that I would, I would make my first defense against Cash, um, and then I, who, as you, as you keep saying, I'm unifying world titles and all that's even more <laughs> exciting. So, I, we just. Just both of us, I feel like we're both got the same mindsets, and we're both we're both eager and keen, and got good good teams around us, good people around us, and I'm sure um, our cross uh, pass will cross again, and and we'll put on another magnificent fight. Oh well, I'm gonna be selfish and hope it does happen. I think you two can have like a trilogy type thing, like a, I'm, yeah. not gonna say, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be a ward guy type thing, but you know, fight yeah. each other again and again and again, because like I say, your styles gel well together and stuff yeah. like that, and. Cash is up for it. In I feel, I feel like the first fight was obviously brilliant and everyone loved it and that. But I feel like if we fight again, it'll be even better because we both know how how grueling and tough that fight was. But we also both know how how we paced the fight, how much more we had left in the tank, what we could do differently. I feel like in the next fight. I'll change a lot more than what Cash will, and um, it's just got the the writings at another huge, big, big fight. And make no mistake, people try and say that I'll try and avoid or whatever. Nah, I have no chance. I'm um I'm ready. I've I fight anyone, and the, there's no proof that what's coming out of my mouth is is bullshit because it's not. Because I've proved it time and time again, and I'll keep proving it. So, but um, I just I just want to get back in the ring and, and punch anybody than now. To be honest, me. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, got. I, I think you've got quite a good champions in your division at the bantamweight. mate. Anui and mm. Ray and Casemiro and new in a fight and stuff like that. I mean, when you look at your division, the bantamweight division. How excited are you to, to get to that world level to fight these big names and stuff like that? I am really excited and obviously I've I've um just before the cash fight, I was um I was out sparring in Marbella with Nordino Bali, who's another world champion at my weight. And that sparring gave me the insight to say to myself, like, you're not far away at all. Do you know what I mean? Like 
obviously as sparring sparring you need to remember that but I did I went over there and it opened my eyes a bit and I was like, you know what, like I'm I'm really, really competing with these guys and um and it and it proved like I, and, and I wasn't just getting ahead of myself and I feel like people maybe get a bit carried away and some <laughs> brutal truth is some some boxers are deluded and they they, they can think things and, and it's the total opposite but I'm glad and I know fine well that that's not the case for me because I'd obviously I had brilliant feedback for him and his team. Uh, again, just literally just before this lockdown, they had been in touch um, and they wanted me back over for another camp because um, he's fight that he was defending his title against Nanito Denea. Like create like fighters I've watched growing up and idolised and and now I'm basically been a part of the build up to to their fights and that it's it's crazy how quickly things can happen and uh, I've. I've I've proved that 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 things can happen real quick if you if you stick in and you dig in and you you believe in yourself and you work hard, um. So, I um, you say the names obviously. I just feel like bantamweight really is one of the toughest weights. Like that uh, Casemiro and Anui fight was just a oh, mouth watering fight, um. Even, I'm saying to myself like I you want to try and stay at Bantamweight and you can you possibly get a world title fight I, I, and you're big for the weight like try and hold out and you'll have that advantage in the ring but at the same time you need to realise that super Bantamweight isn't that big a jump I would fill out even more into that weight and I don't think there's much difference at all in class with the Bantamweight world champions and the super Bantamweight I feel like they fight if they were all to fight each other, you couldn't pick winners. Mm-hmm. So there's no point in me trying to hold out and, and keep keep grinding myself down and, and taking maybe that last 10, 20% out of myself, making the weight and no no being fully 100% to try and have that advantage of size and strength and that when I would be maybe bigger, harder puncher and all that super bantamweight and it's, and it's still the same. Do you know what? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like it's yeah, yeah. it's no much a difference as in as in the the level of opponent I'm going to have, um, the unified world champion at super bantamweight, as um that Akhmedali of the Uzbek boy, he's um 2017 just in Hamburg there at the world championships and amateurs. I was there at the same weight as him, so I could have easily drew him and fought him. Mm-hmm. He lost, he lost in the first fight to the Kazakh who won the world. And then I lost to the American, who the Kazakh beat in the final of the Worlds. And all the the, the two fights between us was was nip and tuck. We could have easily got got decision. So and I could have could have fought him. Obviously, pros and amateurs are completely different. But I'm just trying to say, like, I'm not far away for these guys. Definitely not. Yeah, well, I think that as well. Because, I, like I say, I think right now Scottish boxing is, is sort of buzzing with Josh Taylor doing his thing, yourself coming through as British champion. Then you've got like the guys like John Doherty, Willie Hutchison, do you know what I mean? We Reese McFadden, you've yeah. got all these guys, Kieran Smith, you've got all these guys sort of like there or thereabouts now, which is uh, which is good to see for Scottish boxing, which again, as a selfish jock, I'm absolutely excited to see. And you're gonna be a massive part of that, I think, mate. Yeah, gonna... no, definitely. I oh, feel well, like I just wanna I feel like Obviously, I'm loving like I built my whole career off of Josh, um, on this undercards, and he's made me pr- a bigger name than what I probably could be just with with building off the back end with this, the fact that we were both uh, cycling on the same shows. We sort of got built built up together. Obviously, Josh was pro a good few years before me, but then when I turned over, it was sort of like there was a talk about the two years m- more. M- not just not just Josh and I was always at the back I'm always always getting mentioned and my name was getting bigger and bigger and my profile was getting higher and higher and which I've loved and appreciated so much um but I just feel like one day I'd, I'd love to have my own my own big show well I kind of wanted to have with that cash fight the Emirates mm-hmm. but I feel like I've got an even bigger one in us um you mentioned Tin Castle like the story behind it like big hearts fan hearts of Back to me again, like they're they're behind me. They're willing to, they're willing to give me that platform. We just need the right fight, at the right time, and that would be, you know what? 
obviously I would prepare myself like I've never before and I would leave my heart and soul in the ring. But win, lose or draw that night, my dream my dreams would be would become true. Um so I I just I just feel like we've we've got that in us. Um one day um we just just need the right fight at the right time and obviously the right stepping stones and, and I think we'll get there. Definitely, Liam. I'm going to be right there with my wee camera doing my thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll give you much longer, my man. Uh, I've got to say thanks for doing this for IFL TV. Thanks for giving up your time. I mean, it's locked down, so you've probably got plenty on your hands anyway. But uh, have you got anything else you'd like to add? Just a uh, message to all the fans, fighters, everyone out there. Just obviously try and stay positive. Keep, 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 keep your motivated and keep out, keep, keep fit. You know, that's the best thing I, I think you can do is just keep active and keep your mind off of doing overtime. And, and I'm sure, well, I know for a fact there will be light at the end of this tunnel. So uh, we just need to stay positive and, and get through this together. Stay safe. Definitely. I echo that as well. Lee. Well, as always, thanks again. Uh, hope you have a good day, mate. And uh, I'll catch up with you soon. Hopefully it's in a show. Thanks, Andy. Good stuff. Cheers, mate.